Over the last several videos on my channel, I've been focusing on looking at every single Mario game and the really cool content within them. This included looking at the best levels, the worst levels, the best power-ups, and now finally the weirdest enemies in every Mario game. Most Mario fans are familiar with the core group of enemies that appear in almost every game in the series, but there are some baddies that are extremely obscure and only appear in a few titles. On top of that, some of these are just straight up weird. Just to note, the enemies we're going to be looking at have to be new to that title, just so we don't go over any duplicates. By the way, my name is Copycat, and before I get this video started, I want you all to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to stay notified when I upload new videos. The game that started it all, Super Mario Bros. for the NES, only has 15 enemies spread out among the 8 worlds. These enemies are all considered classic characters who have appeared in several other games. However, if I had to choose the weirdest in this one, then I'd have to go with the Lakitu, as it's literally a Koopa who is wearing glasses, hiding in a cloud. It also annoyingly follows you around the level, throwing spiny eggs that hatch when they hit the ground. Trust me when I say this is probably the most normal enemy you'll see in this video. Now, the American version of Super Mario Bros. 2 had some very interesting enemies, as this game isn't technically a Mario game, and is actually a reskin of a Japanese game called Doki Doki Panic. That means there are several enemies in this game that you won't ever see again in another Mario title. These include the Bezo, Cobrat, Flurry, Ostro, Fanto, Pidget, and Shrouder, just to name a few. However, by far the weirdest enemy has to be the Autobomb, which more often than not has a Shy Guy riding on top of it. These Autobombs shoot projectiles towards you, but if the Shy Guy is removed, you can then ride on top of them. This strange enemy never reappears in the series, even if, oddly enough, I kinda wanted to. Super Mario Bros. 3 introduced a large amount of what we consider now classic characters, but also had a few weird ones that even I, a massive fan of this particular game, had forgotten about. There's the Buster Beetle that picks up ice blocks and throws them at you, the fiery walking piranha plant that literally is what it sounds like, the Hotfoot which are walking flames that act very similarly to Boo's, the Karibo's Goomba, which is a Goomba that uses a shoe to try to stomp on Mario. The Pile Driver Micro Goomba, which lives inside a block that jumps at Mario when he gets near. And the Stretch, which is literally a boo attached to a platform which appears from either the top or bottom trying to damage Mario. However, the weirdest enemy in this game has to be the Angry Sun, and this is for several reasons. The first is because this sun literally tries to dive bomb you, which as a young kid was incredibly freaky. The second is the level it's found in, which is super strange as it doesn't have a proper title and only appears on the overworld map as a bunch of quicksand. Finally, even though it's such an iconic enemy, the sun doesn't appear in another Super Mario Bros. series game, but can be used in Super Mario Maker. Now if you thought Super Mario Bros. 2 had some very unique and weird characters, then you clearly have never looked at Super Mario Land's roster. There are four different kingdoms in this handheld game, all containing enemies that are never seen in any Mario game again. In the Birabuto Kingdom, you have two weird flying enemies in the Fly and the Bun Bun, and also the Gao, which is just a Finx that shoots fireballs. In the Muda Kingdom, you can find a bunch of strange underwater enemies like the Yurin, Torion, and the Undead Honan along with the weird robot Mechabon, which is only found in one level in this game. The Eastern Kingdom has a bunch of ground and cave type enemies like the Baradon or the Toko Toko, which look a lot like Easter Island heads along with the creepy Sioux and Kumo spiders. The Chai Kingdom is home to weird creatures like the Pionpi that act similarly to the dry bones that they can't be stomped on. Anayololan, which is a snake that shoots fireballs, and a few airborne enemies like the Chicken, Rocketon, and Chikako. However, the weirdest enemy in this game, which is also found in the Chai Kingdom, is the Genkotsu. This only appears at the end of the final level, 4-3, and is literally a giant fist coming out of a pipe trying to punch Mario. This is just strange, weird, and oddly lazy for a Mario game. Super Mario World is home to a very wide variety of enemies across its amazing levels. Along with the classics, there are new ones from really interesting Boo types to some very strange dinosaurs. There's so many weird enemies in this game, I don't really feel like boring you all by going through all of them, so I'll just pick my top three. At number three is the amazing Flying Hammer Bro, who is an enemy that sits on two grey blocks with wings on either side that move back and forth, while, of course, he throws hammers. He can also be hard to defeat without taking damage, but you can either hit the blocks below him or stomp on his head. 
At number 2, we have the Fish and Boo. This enemy is a ghost version of the Lakitu, but is fishing a blue flame instead, and when you really think about that, it doesn't make too much sense, but whatever. The Fish and Boo is extremely annoying and can only be defeated by a spin jump. Coming in at number 1 as the weirdest enemy in Super Mario World is Rex. Now, I know a T-Rex has been added to a recent Mario game, but this weird cartoony dinosaur acts very different. That's because their bodies become weirdly compressed when stomped on by Mario, resulting in this strange looking thing. It's just super weird. The sequel to the Game Boy original, Super Mario Land 2 adds some very interesting and weird enemies that only ever show up in this particular game. I could spend quite a while going through the weird enemies here, so I'll just tell you my favorites. There's an entire genre of ant enemies from Ant Toto, who just moves back and forth in a small area, to Chinkunto, who has retractable spikes that can damage Mario, to Decanto, who is an ant with a cannon on its head, and finally Goronto, who digs up rocks and throws them towards Mario. There's the bopping toady that hops around trying to attack you with its tongue. There's the floating face that's literally Wario's face floating that bounces around diagonally in small rooms. There's Jason, who literally looks like Jason Horthy's from those horror movies, which is actually weird in some kind of weird cross promotional thing I don't really understand. And a Jack in a Box that emerges from question mark boxes, hopping around wildly. However, the weirdest enemy in this game has to be the bear, which rolls on top of a beach ball trying to attack Mario. Now this enemy never ever appears in another game and just feels completely out of place. The first 3D game in the series, Super Mario 64 has many unique enemies over the 15 courses. Some honorable mentions of weird ones include the Chuckya, who is just a bomb mom with red hands that runs towards Mario trying to throw him, Mr. Eye, which is a giant eyeball that can shoot pink deadly bubbles at you, the Heave Hose that send Mario flying, and Mr. Blizzard who is a very, very angry snowman. However, the weirdest enemy has to be the Womp, who isn't technically unique to just this game, it's just that his face really freaks me out. Damn, honestly, I, I, that just gives me so many nightmares. Being a very different game in the series, Super Mario Sunshine has some very weird enemies across its 8 levels. There's a definite theme behind the character design as most enemies have some sort of island feel to them. There are the Electro Koopas that are basically electrically charged Koopas, the Stews which are the island equivalent to Goombas, and a few strange water spiders like the Clamber and the Skeeter. The weirdest enemy however has to be the Poink, which is literally a floating pig-like creature that usually appears in groups. When they get close to Mario, they start to attach themselves to the Flood Nozzle, where they can be filled with water then shot in any direction. I really have no idea why these strange enemies even exist. The series handheld return in New Super Mario Bros for the Nintendo DS contains some very classic enemies along with a few brand new ones. In terms of weird enemies, there are three that immediately come to mind. The first is the Balloon Boo that acts like a regular Boo would, but begins to inhale air and grow when you look at it. The second is the Bruiser, which is a very strange ghoul-like monster that can break blocks that are normally indestructible. This enemy does appear in later Mario games in the series, they're just extremely weird, as if you look closely they're actually not ghosts, but they're just wearing a white sheet, so is it just like Little Mac under there or something? Finally, the weirdest enemy in this game has to be the Block Hopper, which disguises itself as a question mark box with two brick blocks on top of it and comes to life trying to hop at you when you approach it. These aren't really tough enemies, they're just really weird as they perfectly blend with the level design in 2-5. The enemies in Super Mario Galaxy were unlike any that had been seen before in any game in the series. Some are more simple like the Bat, Crabber, Flipbug, and Lava Bubble, and some are very very strange like the Cluck Boom, Goom Beetle, Pumpkin Head Goomba, and many more. If I had to choose the weirdest, however, I'd have to go with the Bomb Boos, which are black in appearance and float lazily back and forth until they eventually explode. Seeing Boos explode before your eyes doesn't really make any sense because they're ghosts and are supposed to be intangible. I, I, I don't know, I don't really get it. New Super Mario Bros. Wii adds only a few new enemies, but some of them are extraordinarily weird. My favorite ones are the Bramball, the Eep Cheap, the Hucket Crab that throws sandballs, the Giant King Bill, the Prickly Goomba that uses a spiked chestnut as a shell, and the Scaredy Rats that travel in groups and panic when attacked. However, my top three choices for weirdest enemies in this game have to go to the Abake Block and Statue at 3 and 2, as both are actually items that for some reason turn purple and start to attack Mario. 
Now my choice for the absolutely weirdest in this game goes to the stalking piranha plant that begins to tiptoe on its little stubby legs with its stretchy neck that goes up and down. Something just looks terribly wrong with this plant. The second game in this short series, Super Mario Galaxy 2 introduces only a handful of new enemies and a few that I would consider really weird. The weirdest are the Gummits, the frog-like Klepto that tries to steal items, the Mattermouth that tries to eat the ground from under you, the Octoboo which is some creepy looking ghost fish, and the Smeech which is a small pink winged creature with oddly plump lips. In the end, the weirdest enemy in this game has to be the Snoodle, which is a really strange looking tube worm thing that has the face of a clown. There's just something that looks really unnatural about it, I, I just can't put my finger on it, I, I, don't, I don't know. Super Mario 3D Land, released on the Nintendo 3DS, introduced a few new enemies but most are pretty simplistic and aren't overly weird. The only ones that stick out to me as being kind of weird are the tail enemies they decided to include in the game, like the tailed boo which really doesn't make any sense, the inky piranha plant that covers the screen in ink, the block a block which is a weird snake enemy that's made of brick blocks and question mark blocks, and the wallop which mimics the player's movements but gets stunned for a second if you jump. The absolute weirdest enemy here is the draglet, which is literally just a fat little dragon who shoots fireballs at you. I really don't know who's in charge of Nintendo for creating these enemies, as this is really just a dragon who's been bit by a vampire. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. The second new Super Mario Bros for the handheld consoles didn't really add any new enemies. It just recycled old ones and changed them around a bit. They added new bone enemies like the Piranha Plant and Goomba, and a large number of gold enemies that either give you coins when defeated or throw coins towards you. Now none of the added enemies are necessarily weird, as this game was a bit underwhelming, but by process of elimination I have to go with the small urchin. Now I'm adding this because this enemy is just completely unnecessary as an addition, as it's just it's just like a stationary thing, like they could have just added a spike in its place and it would have done the same job, I, I, it's confusing. New Super Mario Bros U added a bunch of enemies and some are really really weird. There are the Grolls that are subspecies of Thwomps with some really goofy googly eyes, the Dragon Needles that chase Mario in underwater levels, the Goombrats that have a really messed up haircut, and the Waddle Wings which are literally flying squirrels. The weirdest enemy that I actually didn't realize debuted in this game is Nabbit. Now Nabbit is really weird as I guess he's technically a rabbit but has very humanoid features and confusingly wears a bandana that's really similar to Bowser Jr's. Nabbit shows up in a lot of levels in this game and is oddly a playable character in New Super Luigi U. Super Mario 3D World added a lot of brand new enemies, some which are the weirdest ever seen in the series. There's actually so many here that I'm going to choose my top 5 favorite weirdest. Coming in at number 5 are the Rammer Head Sharks that only appear in 3 water levels. These enemies literally look like paint rollers and can only be defeated by invincibility or being ground pound in lucky cat form. At number 4 we have the Block Stepper, which march in large groups but defeating one will cause the others to scatter. Also weirdly enough they wear brown soldiers hats that just look out of place. At number 3 we have the ants that are pretty similar to the ones found in Super Mario Land 2, especially the big ant trooper that can't actually be defeated. At number 2 I chose the Conk Door, which looks like an enemy straight out of Donkey Kong, and for some reason it has a shell on its back, even though it's a bird? That's confusing. Finally at number 1 I chose the strange cat enemies as the weirdest in Super Mario 3D World, as they don't really make much sense and actually have cat-like attributes even though one is a bullet bill and the other is a Goomba? Sometimes I really wonder how Nintendo developers come up with their ideas. The final game in this video, Super Mario Odyssey, is also by far the weirdest as it's the only one where you can actually become most of the enemies. I took a long time deliberating which enemy I considered the weirdest, and I finally landed on the T-Rex as it's just incredibly out of place in this game, especially when you capture it and it's still wearing copy. It, it just looks weird. Alright, so that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, please leave a like, comment below any other video ideas you guys want me to do, and of course subscribe to my channel while hitting that ball button. Also stay tuned this Wednesday for a new video where I'm gonna go over every world record speedrun in every Yoshi game. Also if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my Instagram at copycatgamer where I show you guys some cool clips and some items from my collection. Hope you guys all have a good day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!